hello friends <clears throat> welcome back to my youtube channel uh today's video we are going to talk about how to work with entity framework uh in fact entity framework could be used uh, with the uh, asp.net core or windows based or mobile applications but we could also use entity framework with the console applications on uh, apple silicon <clears throat> Uh, the entity framework, just uh, to let you know, this is an ORM. Uh, it works with the <clears throat> different databases as an object to relational mapper. And fundamentally, its task is to kind of create those classes and everything that could map to your databases and tables and fields. And you don't have to go back to the database to make those adjustments or everything. You could just work in C Sharp, the language which you're working, and you could manipulate those databases uh, stuff. Now, <clears throat> in order to actually work with the entity framework tools uh, the entity framework tools are separated now you would have to install it which i'll show you in the practical stuff so let's not uh, waste more time onto that and we should actually jump on to the entity framework and see how we could use it with the help of uh, uh, vs code and on apple silicon and we'll be using the database first approach or database first methodology for the entity framework means you already have a database and you already have uh, some kind of a tables from where the entity framework could be generated so friends uh, let's see how we could use that uh, entity framework but before that i just want to give you a little bit of a context about two tables i have uh, one is the department table i have which is a simple table these are the two tables which you'll find on uh, <clears throat> Oracle uh, databases. Uh, that's the one which I'm, I'm actually using it. Uh, let me just, uh, okay, let me change the connection string. So I'll just use new query. So if I say select star from DPT, uh, this is one of the small tables where department number is a uh, primary key. And then if I just use select star from EMP, uh, this would actually show me the employees available and it is actually having a department number which is acting as a foreign key out here and then employee number is just like a primary key if you want to take so these are the two tables and we'll utilize these two to actually work with the entity framework okay now let's uh <coughs> we'll open up the same uh, <coughs> project uh, or the vs code project which we were uh, demoing in the last uh, videos also that is a console application and we'll go from there so friends let's start off with that and i'm just gonna go back to the program.cs uh, yesterday we were demonstrating some c sharp stuff so i'm just gonna close that i don't really need it uh, now in order to work with the entity framework a few of couple of uh, prerequisites that which you need to do so the first thing is what you need to install is the dotnet uh, ef tool so i've already installed it but i'll just show you the command and you don't have to note down the commands i'll give all these commands which i'm going to use here within the description of this video so i'll just use dotnet tool and i'll say install and i'll say it's a global one i want to install it globally and dotnet ef so that's one thing which i'm so it's it's giving me a message dotnet ef is already installed but in case you want to update it also let's say tool and you just simply say update and rest of the parameters for example remain same uh, global and dot net ef so if you just want to update that if there is any update it would automatically do that okay so we already have a stable version which is 8.0.0 so that's part one where you actually install the dot net tools which looks fine now in order to work with the this particular uh, project so what we are going to do here is i'm going to install a couple of nougat packages or a nugget packages so i'll say dotnet and i'll just use add package and i would say microsoft dot entity framework core dot sql server so that's one of the package which i need to install so dotnet add package and then you say microsoft dot entity framework core dot sql server so once you do that it actually installs that nugget package into our packet into our uh, current solution so that looks fine which looks good the second one i'm gonna install is not this one rather microsoft entity uh, framework 
and then what I'm gonna install is uh, framework core dot tools so that's the another one which I'm gonna install so once I install this so now I've installed two nugget packages which looks fine to me uh, the third one which I'm gonna install is the just like you could remove that and there is a design package okay so you could use that so these are the three nugget packages which i need to install in order to work with the entity framework i'll actually post these uh, all these commands within the frame uh, within the description of this video so you don't have to note it down or even if you miss it or you want a ready-made command you could just use it now the last thing which you need to do here is because i need to my database is already there, as I mentioned. So I have a test database. There is a DPT and an employee tables out there. They have a relationship between department number using as a primary key, foreign key. And I'm actually using a Docker uh, image with SQL server running on it. So now what I'm gonna use is, I'm gonna use a .NET EF uh, entity framework DB context scaffold command. So that's the command which I'm gonna use here. Now for that particular command, I'll just go back to the VS code. Uh, here it is, Visual Studio code. And I'm just gonna, let's say a little bit enlarge it so that I have some more space. And what I'm gonna use here is, I'm just gonna say .NET uh, EF, and then I'll say DB context, scaffold. So I want to scaffold from so I'm specifying server is equal to localhost because I'm running it on my local machine, though it is a Docker container. And then initial uh, catalog is equal to test. Now, why I'm giving test is because if you go back and check it out in the Azure uh, Studio, so test is the name of the database I'm specifying over here. So that makes sense. So initial catalog is equal to test and then I'll use a semicolon out here. And then what I need to do is, I need to specify a user, which is SA. And then I need to specify the password. Let's say the password is equal to, I, I have given a password, Rohitan123 exclamation. So that's the password I've just given for the demonstration purpose. And then I'll just simply say trust server certificate. Uh, this we are going to use it because now SQL Server requires connections because I'm using a SQL Server Edge or a SQL Server 2022. It requires for a trusted connection means a secured connection. So you just need to set that parameter is equal to true. So that's done. And uh, I'll just keep a semicolon, close it. And then you specify Microsoft uh, dot entity framework and then core dot sql server that's the provider and then i'm specifying the output is gonna be in the models uh, folder and uh, because i had only two tables otherwise you could specify minus t specify the tables which you want but it would automatically be generated for the two one so let's try running this if i run this command it actually tries to run it build is started uh okay use dot net build to see the error okay so let's see what the errors are if i just try that dot net build okay so build is determining program does not contain a static main which we should not have that it's okay uh the program.cs looks fine which is this one and i'm just gonna let's say comment this out which is okay and if i just simply say dot net build all looks good so everything is fine i just have a console dot right line okay so there was some issue now i'm just gonna run the command again which is fine so i'm just gonna clear use that command again which is the same command i'll actually paste this command into the description of the video so you run that and if everything goes fine missing requirement is provider okay so let's see probably we missed it uh the place uh trust server certificate uh certificate is equal to true which is fine and then i'll just simply say 
let me just run it one more time okay let me go into this and i'll just give a space out here and then run it build is succeeded there was a space error like i didn't give a space out there so everything looks fine if you see there is a models folder which is created and it gets created with three things one is the test context this is the actual context file or a db context that is created by the entity framework to connect to your sql server and because we are using a sql server and then every stuff is done and then if you see the department uh, and the employee dot uh, these are the files which are automatically generated the model files which are generated and it has a virtual department also because i have department navigation listed in that and a similar you could find the you have the department uh, model class also now if i go on to the test context so you see uh, i have a public partial test which is inherited from db context one of the classes used for entity framework and then db context options is base options which it is being used from and then finally it has two virtual db sets one is the departments and one is the employees uh, it is almost uh, every time it is pluralized if you don't want pluralized then you would have to use that stuff and then it is using the use sql server the in, um, initial catalog and everything uh, though it is there in the <coughs> Uh, in the actual uh, code uh, the best practice is to use this into the file like kind of a config file like web.config or other environment.config but for the demonstration purpose i'm just keeping it around here so which looks fine and then it generates all model creating it actually generates those columns and uh, mapping for those columns and with the help of the model class so which looks fine to us now this is how you could actually use uh, what you call as the entity framework. Uh, this is just one step of the entity framework. Uh, I'll be actually showing you how you could use this entity framework to query your data, to query your either to use insert or select your queries or anything. That's what we'll be using it. But fundamentally, this video was just to show how you could use the entity framework with the database first approach uh, uh, model and then you could generate that with the help of dotnet tools or ef tools which i have shown you how to use that and then it automatically generates those models and everything and the context file for us and we are ready to go so i hope guys this is one of the kickstarter videos where i've shown you how to use the entity framework tools for the database first approach tomorrow i'll be coming up with the next video where i'll sh use this context and model classes to query the data from sql server the same thing and that would help you to learn your journey with entity framework so stay tuned guys and i'll be coming back with more videos if you have not already subscribed to my channel please do subscribe it and have a good one